Hello and welcome to another episode of Software Carpentry. In the next few minutes, we'll introduce you to a powerful programming tool called a debugger that will help you do more in less time. Suppose we have some data files formatted as shown. Each line is a single observation, and observations are divided into groups, which are separated by blank lines. We want a function that will tell us how many observations are in each group. For example, in this file, the function would return the list 4, 3, and 1. Here's our first attempt at solving the problem. The function count observations takes as its single argument a list of strings, similar to that that would be returned by read lines. We initialize the list of group sizes to the empty list, and the size of the current group to zero. And then for each line in the list, we strip off leading and trailing white space. If the result is the empty string, then we've hit a blank line. So we append the count of the number of observations in the current group to the list we're going to return and reset the count to zero so that we can start another group. If the line isn't empty, then we simply add one to the count of the number of observations in the current group. And of course, when we're done processing all of the lines, we return the list of counts. Down below our function, we have three simple tests. Here's a single line. Well, we should get back a list containing only the number one. Here's two lines. We should get back two because they're in the same group. And here is a line with some data, followed by a blank line, contains only the new line character, followed by another line with some data. And we should get back the result 1, 1, because we have two groups, each with one record. So let's try running our program from the command line. And it fails. In fact, our very first test failed. Something's wrong with the function. Now, if you're like most programmers, and you're using a basic editor like Notepad, you probably debug by adding print statements to your program. And we could go in right now and start printing out the lines that we're reading, print out whether or not we went into the if or the else, print out the current count, and so forth. But that's inefficient. There's a much better way. Let's use an Integrated Development Environment, or IDE. We will show you Wing, but there are many others out there for many different languages. Let's open up our file. Okay, there's our code, there's our tests. Let's go up here and say debug. It runs our code and tells us that we failed on line 17 and highlights the line where we failed. Okay, so far that's no more information than we had. But look down here in the bottom left. The debugger is showing us the values of all the variables. For example, it's showing us that the variable data is a list containing a single line. We can go and explore the data in our program while it's running. But we can do much more than that. Let's stop the debugger and go up to the first line of count observations and click in the left margin to set a breakpoint. That little red stop sign means the program will be halted here while it's running so that we can see what's going on. We click debug again and sure enough the program runs and tells us that we're on line 5 of the file. It's highlighted. If we look down below, we can see our local variables. We have one variable called lines that contains the input argument. So let's go up to here and go step over. We want to step over this line to the next one. Looking down at the variables again, we've now got a variable called counts. Step over. We've now got a variable called current. We can keep stepping and see how our program executes while it's running. We don't have to modify it with print statements. We don't have to exit the code. And if we put our mouse over variables, we can actually see in context what their values are. Step. All right. Line was not the empty string, so we went into the else branch. Current is now 1. We're back around the loop, and now we exit, and we're returning counts. But looking down below, counts is the empty list we're not appending the final count to the list. Let's come down to the bottom of the function and say counts.append of current. So if there isn't a blank line at the end of the file, we will still get the last result appended. Save the file. Run debug. We hit our breakpoint again. We can use F6 on a Windows machine to step over. And sure enough, counts.append of current gets executed, and we're about to return the list containing 1, 
So the next time we step, we'll pop out of the function, do the assertion, and sure enough, we're back in our main program, and the assertion didn't fail. Let's see if it works for the case of two lines. Again, we step in, and this time, rather than running line by line, we're going to use step out. That will just run the code until the current function returns. All right, that assertion passed. Now, let's go back up here and take out the breakpoint. Step to the next line. Now, suppose we want to go into the function, but we don't have the breakpoint set. We can use step into. That will step into function calls instead of stepping over them. So we do step into. Okay, we're in our function. We run a couple of lines. We decide, let's just see how it goes. So we do step out and we're at the end of our program. Everything worked. And the beauty was we did not have to modify our code with print statements or read screens of output to try to diagnose the problem. We can see our data in place as the code is executing.